what should be the factors that should be taken into account when deciding the composition of the watch on the bridge this is of course a question asked to students in the topic of bridge watch keeping so thought i thought i'll make a video today on the factors or the essential factors that are considered when deciding the composition of the bridge watch at sea so firstly of course you have to make sure that at no time the bridge is left unattended uh, when the vessel is at sea uh, you must consider the weather conditions visibility and the fact whether it's daylight or darkness because on many ships uh, a lookout is uh, of course always required at night but sometimes when the weather is clear and there's not much traffic uh, extra additional lookout other than the officer is not posted during the daytime so of course if the visibility is not good if it's foggy even during the daytime then uh, the lookout may be required the master may also be required to be present on the bridge especially if it's restricted visibility proximity to navigational hazards which may make necessary for the officer on watch to carry out additional duties so of course if you frequent position plotting is required or if the vessel is in traffic separation schemes where the uh, traffic is much more or if it is transiting in waters where there is a high concentration of fishing vessels mm -hmm. and then of course the 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 officer on watch may require the assistance of a lookout or a steering helmsman or uh, even the master on the bridge because he or she may be involved in the frequent position plotting of the vessel or may require manual steering also at times the use and operational conditions of navigational aids such as radars or electronic position indicating devices or and other equipment affecting the safe navigation mm -hmm. of the ship should also be a factor taken into account so sometimes it is quite possible for example if the gps is not working sometimes the backup gps may be coming into play but sometimes if the gps is not working and you have to take position using uh, land based objects or bearings and distances of the land based objects then it is a good idea for you to have some extra assistance on the bridge again if the ship is fitted with automatic steering or not now of course if modern day merchant vessels most of the ships are fitted with automatic steering but there could be many ships or many types of vessels uh, different types of vessels that you may be sailing on where automatic steering is not fitted then of course you need somebody to manually steer the vessel now that should not be the officer on the watch because uh, he should focus or uh, on uh, a lookout and making sure uh, that uh, the other duties of the bridge are attended to so if it is required only for the sole duty of uh, steering the vessel it should be a separate helmsman whether there are any radio duties to be performed so talking to the port control on the over the vhf reporting positions all that also kind of distract the officer from their duty so when all this is required to be done it's a good idea for you as an officer and watch to call some extra assistance it could be the master of course who comes up on the bridge and keeps an eye on things uh, other factors that may also be taken into account are whether the vessel is under the ums that is unmanned machinery spaces where the engine room is uh, unmanned by humans and then the alarms and indicators provided on the bridge procedures for the use and limitations uh, any unusual demands on the navigation watch that may arise as a result of special operational circumstances so of course uh, you may be carrying out uh, uh, certain operations which require your attention it could be trainings or drills that are being carried out while at sea uh, and at that point of time uh, you should be focusing on the safe navigation of the ship but not on the trainings and drills that are being conducted from the bridge so it should not distract you so these are some of the examples of the uh, circumstances unusual demands the bridge team normally consists of an officer on watch the helmsman and a lookout who have navigational duties now sometimes the officer on watch becomes the lookout but uh, if the, like i said before the visibility is not good or there's a high traffic uh, or we are in um, uh, na navigation congested waters then additional lookout should be posted an officer on watch is in charge of the bridge team until he or she is relieved and this uh, master has relieved or the next officer is relieved the officer on watch remains in charge of the bridge team the bridge team needs to work closely and across watches as their decision may have impact on the other watches that are coming up as well all right so especially if you are in the middle of the uh, um, alteration of a course to avoid collision or if you can foresee a risk of collision 
which may occur in the next watch and it is important that you work efficiently and effectively to avoid the risk of collision even though it may not be occurring in your watch it may be occurring in the next watch or a subsequent watch the bridge team also has an important role in communicating with the engine room especially there could be circumstances where the engine rpm has to be reduced or the vessel is required to be proceeding at safe speed uh, you may uh, inform the engine room uh, of restricted visibility or high traffic or approaching the port uh then of course frequent communication and uh, uh, all communication should be logged in this case but communication should take place with the engine room master of course has the full authority and responsibility to take action for the safety of the vessel as well as pollution prevention the bridge team should be clear that information is routinely reported to the master no matter how insignificant you may think information is even if it's a breakdown of a equipment or if the equipment is malfunctioning or uh, sounding an alarm uh, and you cannot determine what is the reason you must inform the master the master of course will include all these instructions in his or her standing orders the requirements to keep the master fully informed should not be undermined by the bridge team circumstances under which master should be called should be very clear to the officer on watch and for that you must be very familiar with the master standing orders as well as the company's policies and procedures the master's decision on the other hand to take over watch should be clear and unambiguous so there should not be any doubt in either of the masters or the officer on watch's mind that the master has taken over ideally when the master takes over he or she should i loudly declare that they have taken over and uh, the time of taking over should be logged down in the movement book as well as the deck of log book within the bridge team assignment of duties should be very clear normally if the master is of course on the bridge the master dictates what is uh, required of each person on the bridge team to be done uh, other than that if there is an officer additional officer there to help the officer on watch then the duties and responsibilities should be clear as well only people who can perform effectively should be included in the bridge team if you are intoxicated due to alcohol or drugs or uh, uh, you are fatigued or tired then you should not be part of the bridge team the duties should be clearly prioritized so who is required to take action in the event of risk of collision should be made very clear in the event that there are more than one officer or there is a master and master and an officer on watch uh, then the duties should be clearly delineated on who will prioritize on the actions team members should confirm understanding of these tasks and duties positive reporting on events will enable monitoring and detection of any deterioration in watchkeeping performance so if there are any doubts in your mind as the officer on watch then you must clearly uh, communicate these doubts to your bridge team members Uh, so that each of them understand what is it required to be performed coordination and communication also is a key aspect of the bridge team duty especially it is vital during emergencies or during approaches or departure from ports or congested waters traffic separation schemes or areas of high traffic it is necessary during routine sea passage and port approaches for working effectively as a team a well understood plan and briefed and supported team will result in good situation awareness it will be able to anticipate the dangerous situations recognize development of chain of errors and take action to break the sequence so here it is advisable for you to make yourself very familiar with the passage plan the points of alteration of courses and or speed or any navigational dangers to be expected it could be some military exercises or of, um, some other exercises which may be taking place at sea so that helps you in quick anticipation of the uh, events to occur during the passage all non essential activity on the bridge to be avoided the officer on watch should not be distracted with any other duties other than that is required for the safe navigation of the vessel a new person on the vessel should receive specific familiarization in safety matters now especially if you are a new joint ship vessel uh, officer or if a new joint officer has joined your ship and you are the experienced one make sure they are very familiarized with the bridge layout the equipment the alarm systems and uh, you should not leave the bridge under their command unless you are satisfied and they are satisfied that they are very familiar with the controls you should allow them or provide them with reasonable time to get acquainted with the equipment a knowledgeable and an experienced crew member and officer must be assigned from one to one training they could also used other trainings such as self teaching aids such as computer programs videos 
but of course not on the bridge and they should train themselves before they come to the bridge for their duties make sure that officer on the bridge or any of the bridge team members are not fatigued or tired and they are following the mandatory rest periods as per the stcw manila amendments that is 77 hours of rest in a week uh, or 10 hours in 24 hours at least six hours of continuous rest and minimum 10 hours can be reduced to six hours but not for more than two days alcohol and drug consumption should also be monitored and uh, when the pilot is on the bridge then bridge team should know that even though pilot is on board he will join only temporarily the master is an overall command and the officer on the watch also has the right to question the pilot's action finally at any point of time you should continuously be reassessing the manning levels which may change due to the operational status of the bridge equipment the preventing weather and traffic conditions the nature of the water in which ship is navigating the fatigue levels of the bridge team as well as the workload on the bridge team so and continuously assess this and if there is any change then ask for extra assistance make sure you keep the master and the other officers notified of why you are asking for extra assistance be honest and be truthful in your approach to bridge watch keeping duties for now that's pretty much it and let me know if i missed any points bye for now